in to the online broadcast network, AfterBuzz TV. Over 20 million weekly downloads in over 150 countries and your number one source for after show entertainment. Three, two, TV, the destination for TV superfans, producing after shows for over 300 of your favorite TV shows, interviewing celebrities and showrunners, and bringing you behind the scenes exclusives. All thanks to E Entertainment's Maria Menunos, producer Kevin Undergaro, and internet leader Akamai. Now, let the buzz begin! <laughs> I mean, when I think of the Brink, I think of this song. Me too. I think of Falco. May he rest in peace. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Brink season finale after show. Say it ain't so, James Law Jr. John Manganiello, it's, it's, it's episode 10. It's the end. Well, I'm glad we get a second season. Yes, well, I hope they did improve a second season. We they know yet. Did. Oh, did, oh good. Did. Yeah, that was, that was, we'll, we'll talk about why I was wondering what was going to happen, but you're probably wondering, who am I? Because I have not been on this whole season. I am wondering, how did you get in here? How they let me in. The dogs let me in. Oh, excuse, security? Like, it's too late now. Security. Uh, some of you may know me from other after shows. I do like a hundred of them. My name is James Lott Jr. And you can find me on Twitter at Black Hope LA. That's B L A K H O P E L A. And with me is a person who's been on here, of course. Yeah. The whole time. That is so correct. Yes, it is correct. I've been here since week one. You have. I was Dedicated. younger. <laughs> Thank you. I was younger. I was more immature. I was more naive. Now, you know, now after watching the break, oh, yes. I feel like yes. I'm, a, I'm a grown man. That's why you have facial hair. <laughs> he has facial hair, so it's like you're a man now. Um, thank you. Where can they find you? Where can they find they you? They can find me, John Manganello, at Johnny Mangs on Twitter and Instagram. He's yep. funny. And you can you find me at, at oh. not not oh. at sign, just like okay. literally yes. at the word. Yes. www.johnmanganello.com. <laughs> I mean, first of all. Steven needs a raise. He does. That's because he's working it out tonight. Like, he is pulling out all the stops. <laughs> because Steven is such a nice That's guy. That's the more you know, by the way. Yes. Um, it sounds like it anyway. Uh, yeah, we have a lot to talk we about. We have a lot to talk about because the last episode. And I just want to say overall, this season, what did, you, what did you feel overall? And I'll tell you what I felt overall about this season. Okay, good question. I will say this. There were times during the season where I felt stupid. Oh, okay. And I was like, you know what? My place is on the Big Brother after show. <laughs> Which we do together, actually, on Thursdays at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Yeah, you see how we threw that plug in? Yeah, we did. Um, Shameless. But I, uh, this episode really tied the knot. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, my friend, who's a writer, just okay. told me this term today. They call it in TV writing, dovetailing. Have you okay. Heard this? Yeah, I've heard of it before. Yeah. Okay. Never heard of it. Okay. Where storylines and everything mm -hmm. sort of s comes together. Mm -hmm. Just a yes. nice, pretty bow. And I thought tonight's episode did that really well, mm -hmm. and also set up. Yeah. A season two. Yes. And I loved that. Well, it's funny for me because I've been watching at home. I have watched every episode. I watched at home, and for me, I called this Homeland, but comedy version. Ah. To me, it was like yeah. it's, it was just like because they, they had the kind of same similar kind of setup things, uh -huh. and you know, in the Middle East and Pakistan, all that stuff. And it's about the president, and you know, and all those kind of things. But it was actually all comedy. Yeah. Yet there was like real situations set in there. No, for real. But I, but it was all comedic and kind of gave us like the president, his cabinet, everybody. They were like regular people. Yes. The dialogue, hilarious. So good. So. Oh well my God. Did so you written. see? Did, have you ever watched our after show? Yes, I have a couple times. Because um, the writer Dave Holstein. Yeah, was on. I saw is, when he was on. Is awesome. Yeah, really great guy. Yes, uh, Dave. I, nice. He was watching before he came on. I don't know if he watches the show anymore, but yeah. he is a really nice guy, and he is a smart writer. Mm -hmm. Oh, the writer As writing is smart. See, oh mean, my like, god, yes. T today, especially in today's episode, there were some things I was like, okay, how did they know that's how it works? Like, yeah, oh, yeah. You can definitely you get a little lesson. You get a little like a military lesson, and you know, and, and presidential lesson. You get all these lessons, but it's it's kind of it's all under the guise of comedy. Totally. And so, I, we'll go. I, I, so, so I liked it. I liked the series. It took me some time okay. to feel like I was on top of the world they were creating. Okay. Not nothing against them. This is all me, and yeah. just like I don't know things. Well, see, I like shows of that ilk, like Veep. 
another one where the dialogue again you have to like listen to the dialogue it's really right. funny and it's set in a presidential setting so I, mean, I kind of like these kind of shows because it's not super political because it's, it's kind of there's some slapsticky stuff in it but not too slapsticky so I really enjoyed this whole season well what I like about the brink is that they make sorry there's a hair in my water oh my God. <laughs> it's a dog yours? hair oh, it's a dog no here. it looks like a dog hair my bad <laughs> That's our talking dog. That's our talking dog. He's like, it's his hair. It's crazy. Um, it's okay. I like dogs. Yes. Don't like hair in my beverages. <laughs> you know what I mean? No, I understand. I completely understand. Oh, our systems go. detect that a host has won the <laughs> I'm going to get this. I'm going to get this so many times tonight. I love it. Um, I've never heard it before, and I just, I'm in love with it right now. No, um, it's good. It helps us stand on, t- yes. on task. Yes. Um, so. No, but I will say that I loved it. I love the writing. I think yep. Dave and the rest of the writing team right. are genius. I and, agree. Oh, he just favorited my tweet. Oh, he did. Dave, Yay, Dave. at Calstein. Um, it, you can follow him there. And yes. he, he tweets at fans all the time. He's really awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you did? Oh, Dave. Hi, Dave. I think I'll meet Hi, you Dave. one day. So um, we'll get right into the episode. Wait, no. I want to know what oh. you thought. Well, that's what I'm saying. That's why I'm saying I agree with you and everything. As I said, it was it was an episode. It was a whole season of you got the uh, the drama and all the stuff behind the scenes. Yet it was all comedic. So yes. it was kind of it was just kind of funny to watch. You're talking about some serious subjects like you know bombing and dictatorships and stuff. But it's like completely comedic. And just the, and Jack yes. Black, I never had a feeling for or against him. I really liked him in the show. So I have always liked him. Okay, but I think I think he's proven himself to be really, really versatile. And Tim Robbins, especially in the show, I love Tim. Tim Robbins. Robbins. I mean, I loved him before, but I mean, this just it was like and Carla Gugino. I just I mean, who's in everything these days. It I love her. It was just a great yeah. season. It was a great season. It was season. a nice, tight, uh, short season. And I agree, I, and I loved it. And, I agree. And I told Dave when he was here, like. I like how he writes his female characters. I think mm-hmm. a lot of HBO shows sort of gloss over their female mm-hmm. characters because they have these strong men yes. who are in power. Uh, right. I, I compared his show to Silicon Valley, which I also oh, okay. did the after show for. Yes, I love um, And yeah, so so all good things. Yes, yeah, all good things. Um, do you want to dive into Let's tonight's dive in. episode? Let's dive in. And it's funny you say dive because you know we're thinking. I know what you're thinking. Of Zeke and Glenn. Zeke. The flight. There, Pablo Strider is so funny because I loved him, of course, on Orange Is New Black when he was on there a few seasons ago. And so he just, he's hilarious, first of all. He just commands the screen. So yeah. Zeke and Glenn are so funny because they have all these different crazy adventures. And tonight, they're being sent in to do a very important task. Yes. Shoot down that plane. And and they're drunk. And they're right? drunk. Oh, when, when well, they're hungover. They're, they're kind of coming out of it. And what does, okay, because last week Lauren and I, we're trying to figure this okay. out. She said they were drinking, and then they, they were drinking alcohol, and then they were drinking Listerine. I thought they were just drinking alcohol. They're doing Listerine. Remember, he said the Listerine is still stuck in my stomach. He said yeah. that tonight. They did both. Okay. And well, Listerine, which is alcohol in it, of course. So you can drink that and get, like... Well, my father used to. Oh, did I say that loud? Just kidding. Uh, no, I know people who used to drink Listerine. Okay. <laughs> For fun, they just they drink for fun because there's sorry. alcohol in it. Oh my god! But I never did it myself. Okay. But I thought it'd just be kind of weird. Yeah, you go to the liquor store. Yeah, you go to the liquor store and get a cheap bottle of liquor. Yeah. I mean, I don't get listerine or rubbing I mean, alcohol. I mean, you can buy some cheap liquor. Uh, but my neighbor, I live in South Central. You can. Um, let's but not yes. get off topic. Let's, not get let's off topic. talk about them shooting it on the plane. So Zeke, yes. um, uh, is flying drunk, and that's sort of like how the episode starts. Yeah. They're saying uh, his commander or his officer says, yes. "You need to go. It's yes. time for you to you know prove yourself to the." But country. it's so funny. He's giving the speech, and they're walking. <laughs> they're walking out I to know. the tire. He's like bumping into things. He's like bumping into stuff. He's like, okay. Okay. It, was like, it, just, it was hilarious. It is, and that's another thing that Brink does well. Yeah. It will, it'll be funny, and they'll have these physical moments, yes. but they won't be over the top. No. It'll be just. It was subtle. It was moments. very subtle, yeah. but it made me laugh. Mm-hmm. And um, so they, they have to go into F eighteen. Mm-hmm. Again, another plane. Yeah. <laughs> well, and they and near the beginning of the episode, they spot. Yeah. The 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 plane they have to shoot down. Right. right. They, they see it. And. But then, think, a, then oh, okay, cool. they, they got it. But then this a be huge refueling tanker plane flies dangerously close over them. Right. Which I, I was on a plane once. That was scary. I had a plane that was like right there, like seemed like it was right near us. Wait a minute. Once, like while you were in the air mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. in a commercial. Yeah, like like airplane. A, yeah. airplane. Yeah, like a, yeah, an airplane. You yeah. saw it. We saw it. Oh no, I'd be dead. And we had to go. We had to veer left really fast. No, 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 yes. no. Yes, it was. It was. We we're both coming into approach for LAX. It was really crazy. Once. Okay. Yeah, that's crazy. Great. So I know what that feels like. I would. So they were a little nervous about they, that, uh, and rightfully so. Yes. Um. Uh. So so that happened. 
that is what happened with with them. Yes, so they're going doing that. Um, in the meantime, we yes. have Alex who's yes, trying to call Zaman's psych uh, <laughs> yeah. psychologist, yes. right? Who is uh, what's his name? Hassan. Yeah. Right? And he says, please, let me do it. Like, let me just make this one call. Right. Because he wants to talk to him. He wants to try to talk to him. Because right now they have a car battery. <laughs> They're going to try to attach to his privates to make him talk. Mm-hmm. A car battery. Like, it's just like, I mean, of all the things they could pick, it's, it's, it's hilarious to me. A car you battery. You don't attach a car battery? No? Not normally, no. Oh, GTs. <laughs> Good times. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Had GTs. by all. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, and so he calls Rafiq's uncle yes. and says, who's hilarious, you know, who's a psychologist, yeah. uh, and says that, um, oh, and, and his uncle, Hassan, says that Alex and Zaman, am I saying the right name? Yes. Yeah, Zaman mm-hmm. are the same. They're, they're the same arrogant, profile. They're both overconfident. <laughs> yes. They're both just basically terrible people. He read them, basically. And now here's something that Lauren and I were talking about okay. last week. Got it. I don't get that. If there is anything that I think is wrong about this show, it's the way that people describe Alex. <laughs> I think he's a nice guy. I don't think he's a cocky, arrogant person. I I think he's a nice guy deep down, but he is a little over the top, we'll say, a little bit. Absolutely. He wants to get the job. He wants, the other two men. Right, he wants to get the job the done. Show. He wants to get the job done, of course, but they're all over the top. He wants to get the job done, but I mean, he is kind of self serving. I just, I guess I don't fully understand it. Because when you have an Alex character yep. compared to Zeke and Walter. Okay. I think Alex is the most humble of those three well, Zeke far and, and away. Well, easily. Zeke and Walter are like frat boys who just happen to go into you know the military. I get that, but I don't know why we punish Alex. Do you guys hear that? No, why don't they <laughs> punish? <laughs> you have facial hair. Fish. I don't. I don't. I don't think we're like really punishing anything. I think it's almost. He's almost celebrating that the character is kind of like that. Okay. It's just Jack Black. I mean, it's All like right. I, I like it. I like that in the beginning we first saw him. Him and Rafiq were kind of fighting. Hmm. They were just kind of just bickering back and forth, and they kind of ended you know, the same way. They bicker because Alex always has a way of just saying things. Yeah. He says things wrong, like you people and things like that. I mean, it's like, come on. No, and that's true. Yeah. I'm not saying he's a yeah. perfect human being. But no, I think he's a nice person deep down. I mean, like you said, we see that the progression of him and Rafiq's relationship. I mean, they basically look out for each other. Hmm. They looked out for his family. He looked out for Rafiq's family. I mean, he's like, he, yeah, he has some good stuff in there. He's not one dimensional. Um, but so I'll give you that one. But so, so he's trying to talk to. He wants to find a way so he can actually talk to him. So there's no like bloodshed right. or or you know car batteries. Like I just want to talk to him to get him to stop and take to tell the plane to stop and not you know do the missile. Yes. At, at the same time that Zeke and Alex are doing that. Yes. Walter is oh, yes. experiencing the White House evacuation. Oh, I love it. But he says no. I'm not leaving. Right. Again, Walter, for all his faults, is a is a worker. The thing is, he's just sexual. He will sometimes. Oh, okay, and bye, Pat. Thank time. you. Thanks for your hard work. <laughs> that was like, what's that? I don't know. And that's that. No, I, I'm <laughs> a diva. What you guys don't know about me is offset. I am a diva. <laughs> I throw things. I can't stand him. Oh, I really can't. Steven, he's in the booth right now. Aren't I a diva? <laughs> Our systems detect that a host has wandered off the subject. What? <laughs> <laughs> right. I love it. All right. Right. No. Um, yes. I am but off no, topic. But Walter is just a sexual being. And you know, right. a lot of us know that in my father used to work in actually used to work in the Senate. A lot of people they're sexual. They're just regular, they're men. They're mm-hmm. men, they're mm-hmm. women, they have sex. And that's fine, but when the and, world but, is on the brink. Right. <laughs> yes, but I'm saying, but he works. I'm saying I'm going on agreeing with you, but he totally he does his job. He balances well. He balances. And he has Kendra there. Yes, he does have Kendra. See, that's another thing. We were talking with Dave Holstein, the writer. Yep. Um, that's another thing I really like about this show. You have women, you have strong female yes. characters who are constantly juxtaposing the men yeah, and, I agree. and 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 sh- highlighting the men, the, the men, uh, the men's absurdity. <laughs> yes. Sorry, I'm like trying yeah. to f- yeah. grammar here, um, and I, I really appreciate that. Well, you know, she wanted to stay with Walter. Remember, he's like, she you got to go. And they actually had like a really sweet yeah, moment. They did. They did. And he's like, hugged. and he's like, no, you got to go. And, just, and he grabs some guy who's like out of nowhere and says, can you help me? But you, yeah. You know what I noticed tonight in that scene, actually, is the first time I ever realized it. But Kendra and Walter are totally um, platonic. Yes. Oh, yeah, I, I, never, I never got anything out of them. Which is that. weird because he seduces every woman he but, comes across. Well, I think it's great, though. That's the, that's the great balance of that is that he, the one person he really counts on is a woman. It's a chick. No, and he needs her. And he needs her. But yep. he's not looking at her sexually or doing anything with her sexually. Yep. There, there was... Um, there was a 
a bit in season two of Silicon Valley, yeah. where it was clear that the writers were trying to re- were trying to uh, respond to the first season's yes, criticism that. that there were no women in yeah, the show. Yeah, both seasons. Yeah, and so they hired um, Pi Piper yes. hires Carla. Yes, this this female. Right. Um, and they tried to make her look kind of strong and everything. They tried to. They tried okay. to, but her whole plot point was, oh, she's the token woman. Yes. And I just thought that was insulting. Yeah. Like, okay, it's not really doing anything. Well, you know what's funny? I used to live in the tech in the, in the Silicon Valley, and, that's, and it's kind of. And I understand, yeah, and I don't kind of, think we should change reality. It's kind of sad. Reality. That's I think how it we is. should mirror reality. Yeah. But what what I like is that is that the brink sort of does the opposite mm-hmm. of that. I agree. They don't acknowledge the fact that there aren't many women right. in the cast. What they do is they make those women really headstrong. Well, they are, and I get some good scenes, too. I mean, yes. Um, oh, and we'll talk about Walter and his wife but a little yes, bit later. Like it. But, yeah, so Walter is talking to Israel, and because she's strong, Talia's strong, too, is the Israeli prime minister. She's strong. Yeah, she is. She, gets, he just, she cracks it out just like he does. Yeah. And so they're trying to talk about, you know, they launched Pakistan launched a missile. So, I mean, like, and they're like, if you don't get this cleared up, we're going to launch one, too. Right. And then that's the a world's... scary thought. That's a really scary thought, actually, thinking about that. I'm like, it's scary because it's like probably not too far off from reality. You no. Know, you know what Dave said to us the other week? He, um, George Bush the first yeah. has seen this show. Oh, okay. Not only does he really like it, okay, because he's friends with I think Tim Robbins or oh, okay. Tim Robbins knows him, or someone in the, okay. in the cast knows him. Not only does George Bush the first know, uh, like this show, he says it's eerily accurate. Oh, especially wow. for I think a comedy. Yeah, that's a C. How horrifying is that? Oh, no, that, that is a scary thought. Like, this should only exist on t- on comedic television. Right, right. This sick Right, this whole setup. Right, right, this whole setup. Um, now, me, sorry, so go ahead. Well, I'll say, so, this, so he's talking to them, but meanwhile, this plot point just made me laugh, because I didn't realize there were still Neiman Marcuses around. Um, <laughs> so I guess there are. I mean, I just I don't really go shopping that much, so I didn't know oh, they were still... That's. I don't want to go off topic, but that's <laughs> where I go shopping. <laughs> I, I mean, I used to like them. No, I just it's didn't. nice. It's che- it's it, you can get cheap, nice clothes. Oh, okay, there. I just haven't gone to in a long time. Oh yeah. So that was a plot point actually that they were going to move them two hundred two hundred feet underneath the Neiman Marcus in Virginia. Like, that was just so funny. I it mean, is very funny. and then like later on, they went shopping. They all have Neiman Marcus bags, and they went shopping. That's what you were saying. I was laughing because I'm like, they oh. went shopping. Okay, first of all, that is hysterical. It is hilarious. Good job. Yes, good job. Writers. And he and the president pulls out like this negligee and it's like this is from my wife. And the guy's like, yo, your wife can wear that. That's the whole thing. The I whole was, bit. See, okay, I'm so glad you brought that yeah. up because I was writing down some notes when yeah. you said that and I looked up real quick, but it's I didn't want to lose my thoughts, yeah. so I wrote back down. Sometimes, here's the thing about after buzz shows. Oh, yeah. Sometimes we miss things because we're taking notes. That's why it's good to have three or four people on a panel. To kind of you know do it together yes. so whatever you miss that person catches and right a show like this where they'll just throw oh, yeah. those little easter eggs here yeah. and there yeah. you gotta really mm-hmm. be on it mm-hmm. and, and when you need to take notes it's hard yeah, it's okay hard. i'm so glad you brought but that this up. was a fight it, like, it was a big plot point it was like this funny little plot point they threw in because they really had neiman marcus bags and they're like laughing and she's on the phone with walter and i'm like they went shopping first where they were going down the elevator <laughs> I know. I was like, where are they? I see. Now that all makes sense yes. to me. So there it goes. So it's, so it's underneath oh Neiman Marcus. Gosh. I guess so that no one would know where it is. Like, no one would think to look under Neiman Marcus. I wouldn't, obviously. Yeah. No. I Or right. Macy's or something. I mean, I would never think to look underneath there for it the president. It's funny to think about, like, where are those, like, yeah, I know. hiding spots. I wonder how eerily close that is. I always thought they were near D.C., but I guess not. No, of course not. Oh, get, well, get, 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 she's get, in well, Virginia. Virginia's right next to Sure, Virginia. but I thought, like, even closer. I thought, like, they'd be next door, underground or something. <laughs> I figured they really would get them out the way, like just if anything happens in that vicinity. Hmm, interesting. So Virginia's close by. But anyway, that was kind of that was a cute plot, plot point, and I didn't really know the New Marcus was around, so that's kind of good to know. Um, but the president is on the phone. I mean, the president is talking about a, like basically a domino effect could happen, right? And it's like a, if Pakistan does this, and then North Korea does that, and then China. So we kind of got a little lesson in who's aligned with whom, totally. or is that the proper grammar? I think it's who that aligned with who that <laughs> with who day. Who dat is aligned with who day? So who dat is aligned with who day? Well, they're saying they were saying like China was doing stuff with Pakistan and Russia's doing stuff with China and China. I mean, like it was just like, when he started naming it, I got scared. Kind of like, like these are all if one bomb, if one missile goes this way, then they're gonna launch this one. This is gonna. Attack. I mean, gosh, can we all just get along? God, it was like that was kind of a scary part thing to think about in real life. So um, it it really is frightening. No, it is. And so basically, Walter knows he has to really fix this. No, Walter's like. I gotta say. Yes. And I'm glad he did stay because he did fix everything. Right. right. And of course, his wife walks in. Okay. Again, 
he and his wife have a little adult fun. I don't want you this see? after show to get flagged. Is, this isn't, for inappropriate. This, this isn't um, the brink after dark. Um, um, but they did have, they were enjoying something while they're being called in. Kids at home, when a mommy and a daddy love each other <laughs> yeah, very yeah, much, yeah, 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 no, yeah, yeah. so she comes in and they have some fun. Yes. And in the meantime, uh, the, the two people in Tel Aviv call. Yeah, I know. <laughs> pop up. I thought he would have to answer the phone. No, apparently they yeah, could just pop Yeah, just to pop up. up whatever it was. And it's like, <clears throat> it's like, okay. And that um, basically they launched a missile. Yeah. And he's like, please don't. Please stop. Stop yeah. that. I also didn't realize the missile could be um, sh- uh, taken down mid-flight. Oh, I yeah. thought once it was launched, it was launched. Yeah. Well, it's locked in. Apparently it's locked into its target, but I guess you got to take it down. Nuclear weapons are oh, so scary. Yeah, that's, that's, Can we stop? Yeah, exactly. Did you ever see the documentary Countdown to Zero? Yeah. yeah. It's it's great, yeah. and it's about how basically we can all just blow up yeah. the world. Oh, yeah, easily. And um, um, let's not let that happen, no. folks. This is a service announcement from AfterBuzz TV. The I just more want, you know. I do want to say the one scene that I loved in the middle of all this was when Walter was talking to all of them. They're all on the screens. It was like Russia and Israel and China and India and France and Saudi Arabia, and they're all bickering like children. It was like he was the father. He's like, he's like, okay, you two play nice. You two stop it. Well, and he put all them in their places. Which he's I like, love. France, you're a revel. Right. Er, er, yeah, it's like do you say he, put, he gave the hand to everybody, basically each I know. person. And but then he, he hung up. But he, you know, but here's the here's the here is the thing that I caught. He said goodbye to each of them in each of their languages. It was hilarious. He did. He read. He read this person and goes shalom. He read this person and goes Auf Wiedersehen. He's he did everybody in all their languages. It was so. I wrote it down in my note. It was so funny. That's really funny. I catch all kinds of little things like that. You're so smart. I, said, <laughs> I need to keep you. Over, I need to keep you in my back pocket. Yeah. I, I, I find the little minor details, but again, it was a great plot point. Just like he was just like he was shutting them down, but saying goodbye in their language. He did each one, and then they would just cut off. It would just cut off. It was a great scene. Bye, Felicia. Yep, that's it. Bye, Felicia. Um, and then and then uh, okay, so he finds out the missile is fired. Yes, it's oh, on so Israel. Israel's like it's gone. It's in. Yeah, it's going. It's, right, it's already it's gone. And he calls Kendra and tells her. That and yes. she flips out yes, she in the does. elevator while they're holding their bags. Yes, but they're holding their bags from near Marcus. Cut to Oh Alex. my god. Can go, or no, uh-huh. can we go back to Zeke for a second? What is still okay, so they well I'm nope. thinking we should do Alex first, I think. I think go that's ahead. the next one. Go I think ahead, I think ahead, and then ahead. Zeke is next, I think. Because basically this is an important point of the show. Um well first he gets a chance to talk you know, Hassan tells him, Okay, well you guys are like the same profile. So he sits down next to you. Zaman, and he starts talking to him like he's a therapist. He's like, you know, I had a bad childhood, you know, things like that. And he's like, you know, our, you know, my mother, and I can't say, of course, I can't say what the general said about his mother, but it's a funny line. Why? Okay, I don't think you can say that that word on. You can. I don't think my mom said if I ever said that word. Well, the big bad word. Yes. She would punch my. She. She would punch well, my face. See, I say that she, word, but I say it with Mux friends. I don't say it on TV. But um, yeah, the big bad C. So that was kind of funny. It made me laugh. And then, um, but see, then here's the thing. So he says, "Okay, give me the phone." They get, they get the car battery ready, and he's like, "Okay, just give me the phone." So you think he's going to call it off? Right. He starts screaming in his native tongue. I guess he's saying, you know, all the martyrs, blah blah. blah. And then, as Alex is like, kind of turned to the side because he had a gun. On him. Oh my gosh. He grabs the gun. Well, Z- I mean, yeah. Z- Zaman, Zaman grabs the gun and then shoots himself in the head. And Here's blood Zaman. splatters all over Rafiq and uh, Alex's Alex. Alex's faces and their outfit. Also, how sweet was that moment between Rafiq and Alex at the end of the episode? Uh, well, there's, there's two moments I really liked, and, 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 uh, and we'll get to that in a second. Those are two moments I really do like. But don't let us forget it. We won't forget it. You keep forget us it. in check. You're in check. So, uh, the people at home. So he's dead. So he's he's dead. Bye bye. Now he was on most of the season. He's dead. Zaman. Um, yes, yeah, Zaman is gone. And so then, uh, but then after that, uh, we go back to Zeke and them. They're actually now they're shooting. Now they're shooting. They they got it locked in. And they and they shoot that first plane down. Right. Or they shoot what they think is the only yeah, plane down. The only plane down. Boom, down. Everyone's. We're thinking it's done. They're all excited. Everyone in DC is like, we're good. Right. But then Walter. And this is Walter. See Walter. Way to go. First of all. Walter deserves a raise. Yeah, he does. Yeah, yeah, he does. Because Walter hears, th- who, who does he hear say th- those guys? I've got that part, but I know that he was like, "Let me call Alex back." It, it, something led to him to right. say, "Let me call Alex back." He to hears ask that him there's again. more than one person. Yeah, he says, "Goes because he said men." He goes, "He goes, all men, men are, are those men are martyrs or men." And he's like, "Men, 
It was like, oh no, I think Wait, there's another. We a, only killed one. Yes. There's another plane. Plane out there. And it was a decoy plane. And it was that it was that tanker we saw, that fuel refueler. And he's kinda of, he talks to Zeke and them, they're like, what's a refueler? It can't it can't shoot anything from it. And he's like, nobody can crash into downtown Tel Aviv and explode. Right. So in the meantime, Alex is escaping now with Rafik. They're <laughs> yeah, running, they're trying they're they're running through the streets. They go into the car, the, the, everybody, the rest of the generals on them leave them behind, goes, just take that car. You get in the car, it's a car that has no battery. Hilarious! Like bringing a joke around, you know, bringing it back. No bat. It was like no battery. Bye. It's like, it's like so they have to so they have to in the so hot. Like, I can imagine how hot it is there. It's hot here in LA. By the way, do you know what Dave Holstein told me? What? Every second of this um, TV show shot in LA. Oh, every bit. It looks like somewhere else to me. They, they said he said most of the money for production or for um, set design went to like the outdoor market scenes, and I told oh. them to get that, and they had to get extras who you know oh, wow. who could play convincingly. They have them here in L.A. Yeah, they have all types of actors. They, they, here. they do here in L.A. And yes, they do. Hungry little actors who will say, <laughs> "Give me, give me that background job. I'll do it." I've done background. We've all, I think we've all done it. Have you done background? I have. Yeah, I've done background. Um, uh, but so it's kind of funny. So that's it, it, it. Feel I could feel the heat. They're trying to get through there, and so uh, Alex calls and says, tells him, you know, tells Rufi's family you need to get out of there, and you know, whatever. So they I don't know if they left or anything, but they're going through, and Rafik says, which was so cute. Can I say this word actually? The F word. Oh no. No. So I'll say he. <laughs> <laughs> no, you definitely can't. So I will, this is what I'll say. He says, you're my effing friend. I can say that. You're my effing friend? Oh, so they F. Yes. The F uh, they have a sexual relationship. No. They're saying that. I'm he's, just kidding. He was just like, you know, you're my effing friend. James, I just made a really funny joke. I know you did. And so I'll, funny. I'll laugh tomorrow. Don't worry. Okay, good. And then uh, I'll text you. It's a thinker. I'll text you later and okay, I'll laugh. Cool. And then, and then, Rafik, said, and then uh, Rafik says that and Alex says, I love you too, buddy. Rick's like, I didn't say no, I no, love no, no, you. No, I you know what I just watched today? I'm, I know I'm gonna get uh -oh, that. Uh -oh. I know I'm gonna get that off topic. <laughs> but I watched that episode of Friends where yes. Ross tells Emily he loves oh, her yeah. and she says, he goes, I love you, and she says, Thank you. Yeah. Yes, that's a good one. Yeah. That's a good one. Um, oh good. Okay. Oh, you didn't get it. You I'm were fast. Um, so that's a fun moment. So it's a fun moment. Because we saw them their evolution. That's how they, they started out bickering in the car first episode. I mean, he's, now we saw how they went to the house and we just I mean they've been through a lot. They have. They're up, kind of friends. Up and down, a little roller coaster. Yeah. I'm excited to see what happens season yeah, me too. dose. Dose. Um so then Zeke sh says, yes. here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna do it. Because they We're have no ammo left. Bit. They used all the ammo for that other plane. <laughs> so he does another, um, what do they call Major it? Major move. What's it called when they... Eject. Eject. Ejection. Ejection. I guess so there's they, probably another word for they it. They crash their plane into the second plane. Yeah, that was great. Just in time, they eject themselves yes. and land in Africa. In Africa now. Once again, they've ruined another plane. They're now in another country. <laughs> but they saved the world. So <laughs> Yeah, they saved the world. But it makes you laugh. Because yeah. even they say, as, as you, when you're watching, they're saying, how many planes have we brought down now? How many people have we killed? And how much money? And we make 280 a week? I love that line. That is it's funny. Like, That's kind of a funny line. It is funny. Um, so they're in Africa. Meanwhile, everybody gets word that the world is saved and I love the scene I love the scene so much because I got scared for a second when they call Israel and Israel says it's too late we already sent them this loud you says, should have called us 10 minutes ago and then Walter freaks out yes I, mean, I was freaking out too he's like what and he goes just kidding <laughs> He says, I'm just effing with you. Yeah, I love it. That was, to me, that was just, I love that. Because I was sitting there going, what? Was a woo? Yeah, it was, like, it was crazy. Um, and then, so then, but then, uh, so everything's all good. Uh, Walter, and then he does another switch too with him too, with the president. He gives his resignation. He hands him the, oh, the, yeah. the, the they, they would do for a, an encore because, well, they just be on the I brink agree. every week, I guess. I mean, but. They actually set up really well. It's per it was actually perfect. Yeah. So you know we know Zeke and Glenn are in Africa somewhere, walking around trying to get to wherever. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, we see a wreckage of <laughs> the plane <laughs> in Africa, and a little plane, boy with a goat yep. just walking around, and he sees a missile, and he runs off right, and then gets the, gets his villager. I guess they're like fighter people. Yeah, they they seem like an organization. Yeah, so of some sort. Maybe some maybe some bad yes. guys for season yes. two. Yes, and they actually take the missile that did not explode. Should we make predictions about season two? Sure. All right, let's do Your it. After Buzz TV predictions. Oh, Sir Richard Wentworth, you're so saucy. He is saucy. Um, I predict that 
I think it's pretty clear that 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 weapon is going to be used and going to be an integral part of season yes. two. Not necessarily used, but right. yeah, that, I was also saying, oh my God. Will, will it, won't it be used? Yes. And that will be the drama for the second season. I thought they did a great job of wrapping up season one and yet yes. allowing it to continue into season two yes. um, by by um, by dropping that missile down yes. into Africa and, and getting it picked up by another organization. And I, I predict that Rafiq and Alex will continue to work together they're going to probably go to Africa or go somewhere else to work on this. Mm-hmm. I, think, I think they're going to keep those two well, together. they're heroes. Yeah, they're heroes. So they're, they're going to keep them together. I mean, that's the whole thing, because he was talking about taking them to Paris and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. I think they're going to continue to keep them together, because they actually are a great little duo. Uh, each, Zeke, Alex, and Walter, they all are heroes. Yes, in they the are. First season. They are. So I think they're going to, they have the clout now. They have right. the the... They can say, "Yep, look what I did yeah. in season one." Hey, yeah. remember the Brink season one? Yes. <laughs> um, they can say that. Yes, and yeah, they're going to be able to uh, have some power in their hands for season. And it's two. really funny because I'm wondering with Walter and his wife, Joanne is her name. Um, I wonder if they're going to continue to have this kind of like open marriage thing, where it's kind of it seems to work. For it seems them. to work. Like it's like they really admire each other, and yeah. that's that. I guess that's with them. Cool. Um, but before we go, yes. I got a shout out to Do it. two people who are not here, two panelists. Oh, yeah. At Lolo Logro, Miss Lauren Legrasso, uh, beautiful lady, yes, is, she is in Michigan for a friend's wedding. Very nice. Lauren, we miss you. Yes. Come back soon. Yes, Miss Lauren. Um, and also we have yep. Dave, Dave Abbott. Well, thank you, Chance to meet. Dave, and his, he's at Go Blue Dave. That's right, Go Blue Dave. We miss both of you, and yes. uh, hopefully we'll see them in season two. And maybe for I'll join the panel season two. Yeah, you can be right in the middle. I'll be in the middle. It'll be oh no, because there's there will be four then. Before. Oh, so you wouldn't even two have and to two. be in the middle. We two could and be two. on either side. Yes, two and oh two. Oh my gosh. Season two is gonna be amazing. It's gonna, it's gonna be guys. great, you guys. So thank you so much for supporting them and us this whole season um, on iTunes, YouTube, Absolutely. wherever you found us. We really appreciate it. We, we're glad to bring this to you guys. And so please continue to wa- to continue to watch any of our Afterbus shows and like them, follow them, follow us, follow us at afterbuzztv.com. Definitely uh, watch our Thursday after show for Big Brother. Oh yes, Brother. for Big Brother. And that's on at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Great. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Mwah. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire Afterbuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the Afterbuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. <laughs> Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the host only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. 